In building the Star Trek archive and working with Star Trek The Experience, I began to realize how collectible Star Trek memorabilia has actually become. The prices that people are paying for these items is off the scale. It's astronomical uh, what people will come up with when it's something that's a one-of-a-kind, used in the show especially. Um, as an example, the paper model that Matt Jeffries made of the Bridge of the Enterprise sold for over $47,000. I know the person that bought it and he told me he actually had to mortgage the house, but it was well worth every penny. Of course, he's probably kidding, but there was a piece of carpet that was in John Jeffries' aircraft, because he's a pilot, that was uh, a remnant from the bridge flooring. That sold for over $11,000, just a little piece of carpet. Uh, and it goes on from there. Uh, the Klingon Battlecruiser, I think there was only two of them, recently sold for over $1 million. An original series Spock uniform that, I, I forget the figure, but it was over 80000 for that costume, just one costume. Some of the other artifacts, of course, are listed as priceless. I don't know how you could even put a price on things like an original series tricorder, a, a hand phaser, because they're so few and they're so rare. They, they should be in the Smithsonian, actually. Fascinating. Some of the more prized licensed products uh, in the way of action figures, for example, there's a data that in the, in the early days, I think he was a pale yellow color, and somehow it ended up with blue speckles on his face. Those are pretty rare and quite collectible. Those get up into the hundreds of dollars. Hallmark came out, of course, with the Christmas ornament. I was in Boston at the time when I first realized and saw them on the shelf and just stopped cold in my tracks. Oh my God, I gotta have those. And at that time, at that very second, there was a lot of them. I bought five. By the time I got back to LA, it had hit the streets. You couldn't find them anywhere. I called every Hallmark store in Southern California just to try to get a few more. And at that time, of course, they sold for about $25. Now they're valued anywhere from $300 to $500 plus, if you can find one. It seems so foolish of you to insist on demonstrations. There are several books written, actually, on Star Trek collectibles, and I think a lot of the prices in there are, are pretty savagely undervalued at this point. Uh, and then there are some things, uh, action figures, that you felt were going to be worth money. Never happened because now they flooded the market, and the same thing with Hallmark. So there are so many that the value is probably not going to go up much at any given time. It's the early on toys and action figures that they didn't make very many of. Well, as a, a Trek fan uh, growing up in the 70s, we had a, a variety of uh, uh, official licensed uh, offerings. Uh, my favorite, uh, or at least one of my favorites, was the exploration kit. This is still sealed in its original cellophane and is quite collectible. Anywhere from you know, $120 to $200. I wouldn't part with it for three. Here's actually a buildup of the little communicator that you get in this kit. Here we have a uh, uh, little phaser flashlight. This too is in a pretty minty, unopened package. Uh, I've seen these go for as much as $125, probably worth about a dollar. <laughs> I think when, you, when they first uh, sold in stores, they were you know maybe a dollar or two. Uh, unopened like this, uh, yeah, about $125. Um, they really went to, you know, from one extreme to the other, because you can see how tiny this guy is. Uh, but then look at <laughs> this other uh, licensed phaser. Boy, that's the size of a lantern. This was actually part of the uh, phaser battle game. It came with uh, a, a reflector that you actually shot uh, at with the, the flashlight in the gun. The, the Mego figures, each of the cast was represented in this little 8-inch size figure. Also available for them was the bridge playset, which doubled as a carrying case. And, of course, you could open it up, and it was the bridge of the Enterprise. Hi, I'm Doug Shannon, and welcome to my Star Trek room. I've been collecting Star Trek memorabilia for over 25 years, and I'd like to show you a few of my favorite items. I first started collecting model kits. And here are two of the model kits that I, I built, uh, that I first got and built. Uh, the first one is a Klingon battle cruiser with lights, and it's got a, the head of the cruiser is lit, as you can see, and the crew quarters are lit. And then uh, on the other side of it there is the original USS Enterprise. And these kits were uh, distributed in these boxes by AMT, which was the company that originally did them. And they originally came out in the big box. 
Now this big box is uh, kind of rare and this is the kit you want to look for if you're looking to collect. This is my main autograph wall and you can see it's filled with uh, autographs that I've gotten at conventions. Um, a lot of them are personalized. If the convention is small enough you're able to get a personalized autograph from the star which is really nice. These are a couple of original sketches by Matt Jeffries of the original series. Um, the one on the left is uh, several shuttlecraft, two or three shuttlecraft, and the one on the bottom in that uh, sketch uh, looks an awful lot like the Galileo 7. It's uh, probably a preliminary sketch for, for that vehicle. This is another one of my favorite items. This is uh, Star Trek Guide, or the Star Trek Bible as it's known, from the uh, third season of the original series. This was Matt Jeffries' personal copy, and it's signed on the cover by Matt Jeffries. And it's got uh, all kinds of things in it on how to write for Star Trek, it even has a little quiz in it uh, with the answer sheet behind the quiz. Uh, I guess that you have to take and pass before you can write for Star Trek. Then of course we have the small action figures. Galoob put out the first small action figures when the ge next generation started airing. Um, and did that for a short time. And then Playmates took over. And these are all the Playmates figures. Um, they're six deep. And they go all the way up the wall and over a little bit. Um, and of course there were a few odds and ends of figures put out I believe for Star Trek 3 there were uh, four or five figures put out um, and I believe also Star Trek 5 had some action figures I want these things off the ship I don't care if it takes every man we've got I want them off the ship I've seen a few of the original series triples being sold at auctions and I believe it varies actually according to the appearance of the triple the size of the triple but I've seen them go for several thousand dollars a piece if you can get one. Of course, authenticating them is a problem. There's no tag of any kind, uh, and probably John Dwyer, the set decorator, is about the only character I know that can actually qualify it as being an original triple. How he knows that, I don't know. Well, I'm there now, sir, and you never saw such a fine collection of antiques in your life. The Star Trek collector usually picks a segment of memorabilia that they like. They're either a person who collects licensed products, i.e. action figures and toys and things like that, or there's the real heavy-duty fan who goes after set-used pieces. Those people particularly aren't interested in the action figures, so they may have a few laying around that they'll buy and spend their money on, but they usually try to save their cash for the, the coveted holy grail, let's say. Being that, you know, they're so rare, and the ones that survived, uh, you, you know, are basically priceless, they, they typically fetch a, you know, really pretty penny on the auction block. Something like this, the so-called crapazoid, will fetch over 20 grand if it's an original screen-use prop. The collectors that you run to at conventions are there specifically to attend auctions, usually. Uh, a lot of the time, one of the actors will be there to auction off a prop that they've used. Jerry Ryan, for example, auctioned off one of her rubber hand pieces that Michael Westmore makes for her. And that particular piece sold for well over $900. I've seen everything from the uh, Burke chairs that were used on the uh, set to communicator props and every imaginable costume. The Gorn costume recently went up for auction. I've seen communicators fetch you know, $25,000 for a non-working you know, static communicator prop. It's a, a tangible connection, a, 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 an actual three-dimensional connection to the, the universe that we, that we love so much. Now you cooperate with us and uh, maybe we'll cut you in for a piece of the action. A minuscule, a very small piece. How much is that? That's, um, we'll figure it out later. When charities approach me and ask for, uh, for uh, some kind of a gift, what I usually do is send them an autograph picture. The scripts and, and that kind of very specific memorabilia, I, I'm, I'm saving for my, for my kids and their, grand, and their children and my grandchildren. Usually the auctions at the conventions are for charities. Um, in particular, the Motion Picture Television Hospital Fund, which is the one that Matt Jeffrey specifically liked to donate his charity funds to. Uh, there'll be others. Bill Shatner, for example, a lot of his equestrian work is dedicated to his favorite charities. Bill just recently auctioned off a tour of the sets of Enterprise for well over $5,000. Because Bill was the one auctioning it, it made all the difference in the world. Well, it's, it's the same with baseball uh, cards and, and bats that we use by famous ballplayers or uh, 
Uh, photographs of movie stars through the years have always had some value for people. Autographs are meaningful to people. When I was a young kid, maybe 13, 14 years old, in Boston, there was a theater that used to, uh, uh, with the movies, have stage shows, and stars would come through. Uh, I saw Frank Sinatra on stage for the first time when I was about 15 years old at, at the RKO Keats Theater in Boston where they had a movie and two stage shows a day, one at three o'clock in the afternoon and one at seven or eight at night. And, uh, and I saw Danny Kaye for the very first time on stage in Boston. I was a big fan. I waited outside the stage door and I could not get him to sign an autograph for me. He was surrounded by his protectors and they marched him to his car. And I kept saying, oh, could I have another? There were maybe five or six of us out there. No, 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 we don't have time for that kid. And they put him in his car and drove away. And I was heartbroken. I made myself a promise that if ever anybody asked me for an autograph, I would do it. <laughs> I've been paying for that promise ever since. <laughs> so I signed autographs. Our family's doing fine on money, so what I'm trying to do is get high quality merchandise out there for the lowest possible price. It's really not a profit thing for me, it's a success thing for me. I want the com company to succeed and be around for the next hundred years. It's also one of the last pieces that we have of Star Trek. Uh, creative control of the show is, uh, it belongs to Paramount 100%. Merchandising rights are the only thing we have and I want to keep those alive forever. Well, we do uh, mostly softwares, I think they're called. Uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, mugs, hats, shirts, books. Uh, we really don't do anything. Uh, we don't have action figures. We don't have anything like that. We're going to get into that. Right now, one of the hottest items we have is the uh, uh, communicator. We're doing uh, Star Trek uh, original series communicator replica kits that they can put together. The, the cost is extremely cheap. It's $95. They're not toys. They're props. But uh, people love them and we're going to move on. We've got the tricorder as well, we've got the phaser coming next, and we're going to go the whole gamut there. Whatever people want, they do. We've got a great company doing it. They're the most accurate things on the market. And my intention is to not sell crap, pardon my language, but I do want this to be an integrity-based uh, business, as the family name should always have that with it. Hi, my name is Manuel Jesus. I'm with Art Asylum, and we're the new master toy licensee for Star Trek. We're working on Enterprise, Classic Trek, Nemesis and Borg Assimilation is the line we're doing. It features a little bit of all the alien races that you've seen in all the shows. The fans have really been ecstatic about all the product we're doing. They're really overjoyed and we're happy to fill the gap and get them as much product as we can. And it's really gratifying to see the response that they have in all the figures. All in all, there were thousands of licensed Star Trek collectibles, you know, toys and such that were created back in the 70s. Everything from spoons and uh, cereal bowls to, you know, to the figures and, uh, uh, and t-shirts and, and bed sheets and what have you. They had a variety of uh, collector's plates uh, with the different ships and the characters on them. And uh, Some people are into the plates, some people are into the toys. And, uh, I prefer the toys myself. I think most of us, uh, you know, grew up watching Star Trek and it was just, uh, uh, whether you had a great childhood and it was just a fun adventure or whether you had a rough childhood and it was an escape or whatever the case may be, it's just a, a love affair from, you know, from our early childhood. And the, the collectibles, especially the, uh, the, the, you know, the stuff that we either had when we were kids or weren't able to get when we were kids. Uh, now as adults we can we can you know hit sites like eBay or whatever garage sales and relive the, the you know the, the, the feeling the pleasure that this stuff brought us uh, when we were kids